Hey there. We are excited to announce a new segment we'll be doing twice a month called Safety Chat. And this is it. This will be a chance for us to answer questions, interview experts, comment on safety, security, and crime related news. And most of all, it's a chance for us to engage with the safety and security issues that matter most to you. To kick it off, we're going to talk about the safest cities in America. We're getting ready to launch our seventh annual rankings for every single state. So it's a really great time to talk about like, why do we even do these rankings? But before we get started, we'd love for you to subscribe to this channel. We provide in-depth product reviews, safety tips and news, and a monthly giveaway. So you don't want to miss out on that. And you can go to safewise.com to find out which cities are ranked as the safest in your state for 2021. Woo. All right, so why do we rank the safest cities? Well, to be honest, it was a little bit of curiosity that got us started seven years ago. We wanted to see which cities across the country had the highest and lowest crime rates. And we thought that was something that other people might also find interesting. And luckily for us, they did. I've been able to be part of this project ever since it first started. And it's helped me gain a much better understanding of the impact that crime can have on a community, as well as how there are so many other factors that can contribute to how prevalent crime is or isn't. One of the biggest reasons we keep doing the ranking every year is that it gives us a chance to engage in a dialogue about what it means to characterize a community as safe or dangerous. And believe me, we have learned that it is so far from that simple. And I even hesitate to use the words safest and most dangerous sometimes because our rankings are purely based on crime data. And that's just one small piece of what's going on in an entire community. But the rewarding part has been that I've actually been able to help people in their real lives, whether it was just a quick thank you, you know, email note sent to us, thanking us for the rankings or people contacting us to ask for specific help. So I thought I would share a couple of these stories with you, plus give you a few tips to help you do the right kind of research to find out how safe or dangerous your city or neighborhood is. Let's jump in. Let's start with the story of a young family that uh, was looking to make a huge move. So this was a couple, they were both educators and they relocated to Hawaii to teach. And while they were there, they ended up having a baby and they wanted to come back home and be closer to family on the mainland. So the father found our list of safest cities in Washington which is where they were headed. And he read the whole entire article. And at that time, I believe there were 50 safest cities in Washington. And we wrote a blurb about every single city. So we talked about the crime rates. We talked about law enforcement initiatives. We talked about community initiatives. We talked about anything going on that, that might be impacting the public safety in that community and why they were doing such a great job at keeping crime rates low. Um, so that gentleman told me that um, the rankings and the information that we shared about the crime rates, the public safety and community initiatives helped them balance out their choice between finding a safe community and an affordable place to live. Ultimately, that family ended up moving to Spokane, which I can tell you is not one of Washington's safest cities. But I was able to help give them tips to find a safer neighborhood within a city that has struggled with big economic disparity, higher crime, and a pretty prevalent homeless population. All right, another great story, Rocky. In safety chat, we get interrupted by the puppy because it's casual. A gentleman reached out to me on LinkedIn and he had a grandson who was struggling with addiction and was getting ready to graduate high school and move on to college. So the family lives in New York City and the grandfather wanted some advice to help find a place where he could send his grandson for a couple months to get a little bit of real life experience before he moved on to college. So he wanted to find a place where the boy could get away from his bad influences, maybe get some work experience and get some professional help with the issues that he was struggling with before he went off, you know, to the college environment. Um, basically the grandfather was looking for a test run, um, for the kid to be on his own, but he wanted to make sure it was in a safe place. As we continued talking, I discovered the grandfather's biggest fear was sending his grandson to a place where there had been a mass shooting. So 
This was a wonderful opportunity to talk with him about how these terrible outlier events like mass shootings are not indicative of how safe or dangerous natural city is. In fact, there are some cities that always end up on our safest cities lists that have had horrible, horrible events in them. Parkland, Florida, Thousand Oaks, California, Newtown, Connecticut. All of these cities make it into our safest lists um, despite the horrible events that have occurred there. So we talked through how even though it's scary to think about things like a mass shooting, these big, horrible events are really the exception to the rule. So that's why crime isn't the only factor you need to look for when you're evaluating a city or a community. Kids going off on their own is a theme that comes up a lot, I've learned. I recently had a mother reach out via email to ask for help finding a safe place for her son to live while he moves to the Baltimore area for a really awesome internship opportunity. So I did a deep dive into Baltimore, which has a higher crime rate than a lot of um, cities in the country. And I looked at Baltimore and the surrounding suburbs and local areas, and it was challenging. I was able to come up with a few suggestions, but the biggest help I was ultimately able to offer was teaching this mother and her son how to do the research to find a safer neighborhood or even just a safer apartment complex um, that could also meet the other criteria that they had, like location, you know, commuting time, affordability, etc. It's nice to know that because we publish these rankings every year, people see us as a resource they can trust to help them. And then when I actually get to interact with and help people learn what to do on their own, it's really, really cool. And speaking of that, I'm gonna leave you with a few tips on how you can find a safe neighborhood. Now, unfortunately, there's no foolproof way to know whether a city or a neighborhood is safe, but there's a lot of info that you can look up that will give you a pretty good picture. And so here are some of the top resources that we recommend to get started. I think that it's always wise to check out neighborhood reports and reviews on sites like Area Vibes and Neighborhood Scout. These give more than just crime data. They also dive into the economics, how good the schools are, access to medical care, parks, walkability, all of that kind of information. And you can also get actual reviews from people who live in the neighborhood. Um, and that's cool, it's like a Yelp review for a place you're thinking of moving. And this next, um, this next suggestion could be a little controversial because we have mixed feelings about this app, but I think for these purposes, it's the perfect time to use it. And it's using the Ring Neighbors app. It's free, you don't have to have Ring products to use it, but use this app to check out the live feed in a neighborhood that you're considering moving to. All you have to do is enter in an address and you'll be able to see the feed um, in that area. What people post on the Ring Neighbors app are things like lost pets, package theft, any other suspicious behavior lurkers on the porch, people, you know, checking out the car. You can also see local law enforcement updates in many areas. To learn more about the Ring Neighbors app and its pros and cons, go to our Ring video that looks at the app, Ring's privacy issues, and its relationship and partnerships with the police. And finally, the last recommendation that I have at this stage is to contact the local police department. Most precincts will have crime statistics that they can share with you, but they've also got good resources to help you learn more about neighborhood safety in general and specifically how you can get involved in your neighborhood or your potential neighborhood. And this is gonna give you more information than just the FBI crime statistics because you'll find out what's really happening in that actual neighborhood according to the police officers that work there. So those are just a few quick and easy ways to get a picture about safety in a specific area. And if you want more tips, we've got some great articles with more advice and resources to help you find out if a neighborhood is safe and what factors you should be looking for. To make your life easy, they're linked in the description box below. Ultimately, finding a safe place to live is tricky. And we hope that our rankings of the safest cities in each state are a good starting point. And this little safety chat is just the beginning of this conversation. We'll be take, talking more about the Safest Cities reports, including what they teach us about each state and city and how they can help us generate a conversation about what each one of us can do individually to create a safer community no matter where we live.
but we really, really want to hear from you on Safety Chat. If you have a question about the Safest Cities reports, um, wondering what you can do to make your home or community safer, please subscribe to our channel and drop your questions in the comments. We'll be paying close attention to the comments and we'll do our very best to answer your questions. Well, thanks for joining me for this first ever safety chat. And I look forward to learning what's on your mind and answering your questions right here every other week. Until next time, stay safe.